Hi everybody, let's talk about using the selection tools in Adobe Illustrator. There are a few little subtle differences between the selection tools and it's important to understand how each one works so you get an idea of uh, what you do with the different objects you draw. All right, so first things first, we need to pick one of the objects in the uh, toolbar to draw first so we can kind of play around with the selection tool and see what it does. So if you don't see uh, the, the toolbar like this, double check and make sure that you're using the advanced toolbar from the window menu. Sometimes that can trip people up on where they find the tools they need. Also, if you look at the toolbar on the uh, shape tool especially, you've got different choices for the type of tool you're gonna draw or the type of shape you're gonna draw. So sometimes it's the rectangle on top or the ellipse. It all depends on which one that you used last actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the rectangle. And when you come over to your page, just drag and draw with your mouse and drop that square onto your page. Now, the natural inclination is to grab that shape and move it. But you can't grab a shape unless you've actually changed to the selection tool. And so a lot of times new students, they'll, they'll try to grab it and they'll end up drawing more squares, right? Because they haven't switched tools yet. So get used to the idea that whenever you draw something to change over to the selection tool and up at the top of the screen on the top left toolbar, you have the regular selection tool, which is the solid black tool. And then you have the direct selection tool, which is, which is the right, <laughs> the white arrow on the right. So let's start with the black selection arrow. I'll click that one. This is the one that allows me to click and drag and move. Uh, my object. It also allows me to grab articulation corners like this where I can stretch or scale the object. You can tell the difference between an anchor point and one of those control bars because these are open white squares on the corners of an object and that allows you to scale something. Also notice how when you move that cursor just a little to the left or to the side of that uh, control point, it turns into a back and forth arrow so you can actually rotate an object as well. So there are subtle little things going on depending on where you position your cursor. So pay attention to that. All right, so the selection tool, that's what it does. It grabs things, moves things, rotates them, scales them, does everything you wanna do. Now, what's the difference between that and the direct selection arrow? The direct selection arrow allows you to change and select single points or single lines on your object. Now here's another very subtle thing. When I changed tools, the white boxes disappeared on the corners of my object. Now what I see instead are solid blue anchor points or vector points. When they are solid blue, that means they are active. So with that white arrow, if I just click inside the boundary of that shape, it moves it as if uh, I was using the normal selection tool. If instead I click first, just tap once on one anchor point at a time with the white arrow, notice how all the other corners turn open or they turn white, but the one I clicked remains blue. That means that I can grab that one anchor point by itself and manipulate it while leaving the others in place. That's essentially the main difference between the normal selection tool and the white selection tool. What you're doing is you're grabbing anchor points or pieces of a vector object as opposed to the entire shape itself. That being said, whenever you click inside the boundary of the shape, you'll always grab all the pieces of that shape, even if you're using the direct selection tool. Here's another nifty thing that you may notice on uh, newer editions of Illustrator, there are these, these little circular dials that you'll find at the corner of objects. This is really nifty. They needed this for a long time, so I'm really glad that Adobe added it. Watch what happens if you drag that with one of your selection arrows. It rounds corners. Cool. And it goes back and forth. You can dial it back and forth at any position. Really cool. 
Now, what if I click one anchor point by itself? Notice how the rest of the dials disappear and it allows me to just dial one corner at a time. Really handy, love that feature. All right, another thing to point out with the way the selection arrows work is instead of having to hunt and peck and click exactly on those anchor points that you need, you can also do a little imaginary drawing and with your mouse just click and drag around the anchor point you wanna select and it'll automatically select whatever is within that little imaginary boundary. That can help you if you're trying to target one little piece, grab it real quick, instead of having to hunt and peck and get that one directly. Same thing is true with the normal selection arrow. If you switch to that and you drag around an entire object, you select the whole object and grab it and move it independently. Now, something you're gonna to wanna to get used to are the keyboard shortcuts. Um, if you memorize that the letter V on your keyboard switches to the uh, selection tool, that speeds up your process. So let's say you draw a shape and then you press V on your keyboard, you'll immediately get that direct, or not direct, the regular selection tool. Now the keyboard shortcut, the hotkey for the direct selection arrow is A on your keyboard. So if you press A, you immediately switch to the wide arrow and you can then proceed with adjusting your anchor points as needed. So V and A, just kind of get used to those two and you can uh, work with the tool. Another really handy shortcut, which I use all the time, is the command key or the control key if you're on a PC. Basically, no matter what tool you're using, if you press command or control on a PC, you will temporarily get the selection arrow. That allows you to temporarily grab something, move it, let go, and return to drawing with your original um, object tool. Pretty nifty, pretty handy. All right, now let's say I want to color these objects. And I should probably do that so I can demonstrate what some of the other selection tools do. So I'm gonna go through, press V, and I'm gonna grab a couple objects. Let's say I wanna collect more than one at a time. Well, one way would be to drag around the entire group of objects and select them all at once. Or if I just need a few of them, I click and I hold my shift key on my keyboard and I select more than one. Notice how they're all filled with white. If you look on your toolbar, there is a white fill square. And that's the fill color. If you look on your properties palette, if it's open, you'll see that there's a white square there. If I switch colors, that changes the color of those objects. I could proceed with selecting different ones, change their color to something else. Oh, that's obnoxious. And that's how that works. Now, something else that you'll get used to is once you have something selected, how do you let go of it? Because these things are sticky. They want to they want to hang on to your mouse. Well, the quickest, easiest way to let go of something is to just click the empty background and that deselects. So if you're trying to move something and then you need to move on to something else, either just directly click that other object or click the empty space and you let go of whatever happens to be selected. Now to demonstrate the next thing, we need to clutter our page with a bunch of random shapes. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the uh, the square tool, the rectangle tool, and just draw different colored objects. I'm gonna specifically select different colors as I go, just to make a cluster of overlapping objects. The reason for this is to demonstrate that over time, as you build up complex artwork, you're gonna have a pile of vector shapes on your page, and it's gonna be hard uh, to grab and isolate things by themselves. And so that can be a challenge as you're trying to grab something. Like let's say you wanna grab something behind something else. You can't see it anymore. You know, and that can be really troublesome. So let me show you a couple ways to select objects. Let's say, first of all, I wanna select 
a, uh, all the shapes that are the same color? Well, that's pretty easy. On your toolbar, there is a magic wand. It doesn't work like a uh, Photoshop magic wand works, which selects pixel, uh, pixels. Instead, the Illustrator magic wand selects color. So if I select the magic wand and click on all the green shapes, for example, it's going to select everything that uses the exact same color. Now, I can't move it because I've got the magic wand, but if I switch, press V, keeps all those objects selected and I can then move them around my page if I need to. So that's one way to go. If I need to select everything that is sharing a color, magic wand is a good way to do it. Here's something else you can do. Let's say I select one of these shapes, but instead I wanna select everything that has the same stroke color. Well, there isn't a tool for that, but under the select menu, you're gonna find additional options for using selection. Now, there's a whole bunch here, like select all, select all on active artboard, deselect, reverse, invert, um, next object above or next object below. That's really handy if you're trying to target something laying down beneath something else. Or here we go, same. Under the same option, you get same fill color, stroke color, weight, appearance, you know, so there are a variety of attributes that are applied to your object and you can select those. That's again, another handy way to select, to bulk select items as you're trying to move around your, your page because it can be really tedious to hold the shift key and try to select every single thing and grab them and make sure that you get all the right ones. Um, that can be really tedious. So finding these little shortcuts are really helpful in learning how to, to select things as you go. Um, one more to show you. There is also a lasso. So that lasso is just another freehand way to just you know draw a little selection box. Okay, and then once you have that selection made, if you change to the direct selection tool, I can move those segments all together. Um, this can also be really helpful when working with complex artwork and you need to kind of lasso, you need to lasso like a whole segment, but you need to ignore the rest. That's one way to get in there and, and target those specific pieces without having again to hunt and peck with the white arrow uh, or the selection tool. Now there's one other way to view your artwork that might help you when you're selecting something that's fairly complex. That is to switch to outline view. So outline view is the line art view of your work. And sometimes, especially if you have a really complex piece of art, you can't find that one shape that's underneath everything else and you need to grab it or isolate it. So one thing you can do is change to this view and this allows you to grab anything right off of its center. You'll notice on these objects, each one has a little X. That little X represents the middle of that object. And if you can grab it, it'll then highlight it and you can see which object you're grabbing. You can also click on a line or one of the other uh, segments. So this is another way to kind of see through your, your artwork and grab those things that you need to grab from underneath. Then let's say if I go back to the preview mode under the view menu, now I see the artwork and now I see that my selected shape is hidden underneath. And what I'll do is maybe arrange under the object menu and bring it to the front. So that's another thing to remember. There is an order to your shapes as you draw. They get layered and piled right on top of each other. So as you go, you're basically piling things up. And if you need to bring something forward or put something behind under the object menu, under arrange, you have that choice. You can do that. All right, one last thing I'll mention here is that when selecting objects, sometimes you have a tendency to double click or triple click even. You've got a nervous trigger finger. If you do that, 
then suddenly your workspace changes. And that's not a bad thing. But sometimes when you do it for the first time, you're like, what's going on? Well, this is called isolation mode. And what happens is Illustrator knows that its artwork is complex. And that when you have lots of pieces piled in collage together, sometimes you need to be able to work on something by itself without disturbing anything, uh, anything else. It's kind of like a little quick mask. So if you double click or triple click something, that isolates that object by itself, which means that you can use your selection tools and it won't disturb anything else. And that's really helpful. Now to get out of that mode, you can see, you can tell you're in the mode because everything went dim. To get out of it, you have to kind of double click or triple click the background. That brings you back to normal. So that's something that happens a lot of times. You discover it by mistake. You kind of double click and you're like, hey, everything's locked. I can't move it. That's why. So just remember when in doubt, just double click the background that lets go of whatever you're doing and kind of lets you reset the tool and move on from there. All right, so that's a little rundown, a little introduction to how those selection tools work. Hopefully that helps you understand a little better how to navigate your artwork and work with the shapes and uh, check back for other videos so you can learn a little more about Illustrator. All right, see you next time.